Hi there, my name is Kendrick and welcome to another ENT Mail interview. Today I have our panel to discuss how the SF play works. And the first one here is Joyce. So Joyce, please introduce yourself to everyone. Hi, my name is Joyce. I'm an INFJ. My full OP code is FFNITI, sleep, consume, play, blast. And I'm happy to be here, Kendrick. Awesome, Joyce. Next, we got Rob. Hey, I'm a ENFJ jumper, uh, F -E, double feminine, F-E-S-E, -E, play, consume, sleep, blast. All right, awesome to have you, Rob. Next, we got Manly. Hey, guys, I'm Manly. I'm an ESTP. Uh, my code in OP is double feminine, S-E-T-I, consume, play, sleep, blast. Gotcha, man. And last but not least, we got Marco. Hey, how you doing? Uh, so I'm an ISTP. Uh, sleep, blast, play, consume, last, double masculine. Awesome to have you, dude. Good to see you again. Yeah, awesome. you too, man. Good to see you. All right, guys. So the first topic we're going to cover today is SF play. So you guys all shared this animal, but you're all looking at it from a different perspective because two of you are single observers and two of you are single deciders. So some of you will have it in a people-related thing, while the other will be like more things-related. So... Um, let's go over what play is first, which is expanding your energy for the tribe. So can you guys just describe how you personally experience expanding energy for the tribe in your own personal animal stack? Because uh, Joyce has it as a demon. It's third. All right. Rob has it first. Uh, Marco has it third. And Manly has it second, I think. Um, so why don't we start with Joyce first? So how do you experience it, Joyce? Yes, uh, get the blast last to start off talking first. <laughs> this is amazing. So SF play for me is you're kind of um, emotionally like j jiving and vibing with them and you're kind of going with the tribe, going with the flow and you're kind of playing with them, seeing what's in front of you and just kind of like interacting with it in a lighthearted way, I think. <laughs> and it's also sometimes it's easy to I'm I have feminine FE so sometimes it's easy to go with with what the tribe's doing so you're like yeah you're doing that you like that okay great <laughs> so it's a lot of appeasing or kind of seeing how you can work with everyone's values like how you can accommodate everyone's values in real time as it's happening gotcha what about you Rob yeah I really like that last Thing she said about accommodating everyone's values in real time. I actually did some videos recently kind of talking about my experience with this. So, and my perspective with FE is like very much attached to my play because my blast is last. Um, so it is very much just about like, what are people thinking about like this thing that's happening right now? Um, so that, that can just be like an experience. And it's, I feel like it's like consuming what, what people think of as consume, but just like what people are thinking, oh, what, what are other people consuming almost? It's like, what, what are they thinking about this thing? And just trying to understand that and synthesize. Um, I've also talked about it in terms of, or seen it in myself, in trying to move the conversation almost to things that we will value. So that's kind of like the SE, like pushing in a direction um, disrupting what we're doing right now because it doesn't seem to be working in some way. And it's like, we need to go somewhere else. Um, so that's another thing that I see myself doing um, and cracking jokes and things like that, just trying to like lighten up things. And um, I, one, one of those other things I, I often do is just sort of see like things that people could value in the moment and trying to like point them out almost. Um, like I catch myself doing that like automatically. That's like one of those things that I need to like almost stop myself from doing because it's like, that's distracting. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> but like if if I come up, I, if I have an observation I wanna share with the tribe because I think people like find it funny, I, but it's not the right time to do that. That's like something I need to like hold myself back from doing, but yeah. Gotcha, um, thanks man. Uh, yeah. Manly, you're up next. So SEFE play for me feels like I'm exerting energy to prioritize the values of the majority that I'm in the presence of at any given time. Um, it could look like, kind of like what Rob was saying, making jokes for people um, to kind of heighten the atmosphere, bring laughter, overall like a sense of positivity and joy. 
so that people can focus on what it is that's going to please them the most at any given context. Um, yeah, that's probably about it. All right, thanks, man. And uh, trying to get better at blasting. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Marco? Um, okay, it's um, it's about finding a, a common place, common interest. So for me, as a lead CI, it's about lowering the bar kind of deal and kind of keep my identity to myself and, and kind of zoom in on my, my audience. Um, it really differs to like the quality of it be, being consumed last. So uh, if it's like a totally new audience, like this moment, playing this moment, uh, it can get very tricky because it's so new and overstimulating, right? Um, but the more I know my group or the topic, uh, at hand, um, the better or uh, more organic the play will become and more appropriate for the situation where you don't have like something uh, lined up, something prepared, if that makes sense. Yeah, so Marco, um, I want you to elaborate on your play because your play is double masculine compared to these guys. These guys have double feminine play, right? Yours is double masculine, yeah. so yours is going to be the most aggressive yeah. play. So like, what are you doing with that double masculine play of yours? Um, well, it can be quite inappropriate, quite punchy. Usually, you swear words, and uh, um, I'm usually not really aware of tracking my audience if I don't know them. So I just roll with the dice, you know, just go with the flow and just hope it's good enough. <laughs> uh, so, so that's kind of how it goes. I, I also like the word when you said that you can play by just rolling with a, rolling with the punches instead of preparing something. So I feel like that yeah. maybe you and Joyce have something similar to that because you, you're both like lead sleep. So you're like yeah. always strategizing in your head before you, you do yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Even for like uh, this interview, it's like I did some sleep energy about like some topics and like so I don't run out of uh, things to say, right? My, my mind do it on automatically. Although I know real play is not planned. It, it shouldn't be planned. Right. And, and it works better if you don't plan it and you just you know, stay in the moment and actually consume what's going on. So, but it's usually hard if it's a totally new situation, but that's kind of what I work on you know, when it comes to play, being as organic, organic as possible. Do, do you relate with that, Joyce? Because I, you know, Marco said that play is not planned. It's spontaneous in, in the moment, but do you plan your play? Because you have it also, you know, you have to sleep first. Sometimes I plan a lot of things, Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny. We were talking about sleep just now. And before we started the interview, we were talking about like how I have a headache and it's from me sleeping, like literally sleeping too much. And I'm like, Kendrick, do you know how that feels? And then Kendrick's like, no, I don't know how it feels to over oversleep so much. You have a headache. And like, <laughs> it's because like, I have so little energy. I'm like, how can I maintain it for this interview I'm going to do with you? So I'm like, I just need to sleep so I can feel more energetic. And then I'm like, ow, instead of having more play energy, I just have more, uh, more, more problems. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, in regards to Marco and relating to that. Yeah. I, I think play, it, it can be, it can be overwhelming a little bit sometimes too, de uh, depending on who it's with. For me, like, because I have maybe feminine FP, I get kind of scared when people are, like, when I'm around people who are rude and, and not receptive of, of the, the good vibes. So let's say, like, I'm trying to find a common ground where everyone can kind of feel good and someone's just not jiving it. They're not moving with the feelings. I start to wonder if it's my fault and then I, I take it on on my own. Is my play not good enough? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Play demon uh, insecurities. <laughs> That's funny. Here's my play, not good enough. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's the girl that like interviews nine people at once. <laughs> like, like, I don't know if you guys seen Joyce's channel, but she does like freaking interviews like with eight and nine people, like, like mass amount of people at one time. So I, I don't know if that, that's like, that's really good for someone that's lead sleep, you know? Um, so one thing I noticed about SF play is that you guys are like very expressive when you play. Like, and you like to almost be like dramatic, you know, and like add that like dramatic flair to it, you know? Like uh, one thing I used to say to my sister who was extra feeling to make her laugh, is like, I go up there, I'm like, show me the money, you know? Like, I'm like very expressive, right? Like I just, you know, or like I pretend I'm a rapper. I'm like, yo, yo, what's up gangster? You know, like, so it's like, like, do you guys do that kind of stuff a lot? You know, with that like SF play where like, you're like very animated, like very like playful, you know, just like 
doing stuff that's like sometimes that makes no sense, but it's just fun, you know. Who cares? Anyone wants to take the floor on that? I mean, I'll be goofy in my own home. <laughs> I can tell that people think that's weird if I'm like goofy out in the open somewhere, but I don't know. Sometimes that kind of thing is fun, so that is something I'm kind of like exploring doing in more ways, honestly. Um, it's just like, I, I just want to bring joy to the world, so why not? Um, so that's sort of something I'm growing into in a way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like to be expressive, certainly. Um, I, I like what Marco said about it's like not planned because I actually, with those YouTube videos I made, like I, I really don't want to write a script because I then I'm just gonna feel like I need to like stick to those words exactly. I just wanna like have an idea and just like say it, it's have it feel natural, you know? Like that's that's me, I guess. That's how I feel like is is most me if I'm natural and just kind of expressing what I'm feeling as as it's coming out like I'm doing right now. <laughs> All right, so. so so Rob and Manly, you guys both have saved your play, but um, the difference is that Rob is tribe of himself and manly self above tribe so manly will not care and he'll just play and do whatever the hell he wants so so while, while rob might ping off the tribe first to see what's appropriate before he like play along so manly can you talk about like how you would just like do whatever the hell you want with that play you know i mean you're using it as a tool but you're doing it for fun too because you like it you know it's like second right yeah the way that i use play um the most common way that i use it is i kind of act like an idiot um i'll be kind of goofy or dumb or i'll act like i'm dumb to make people laugh i'll probably say inappropriate things if you ask the people i know they'll be like i mean you you probably saw it on the last video i mean i'll say things that other people perceive as inappropriate but i'll get away with it for some reason and people will even end up being endeared to me because i do it i have no idea why in particular but it's kind of it's just using a play on words acting goofy having fun um I, when it comes to the bottom line, I will say that I don't, if someone's not fitting into the play energy that I'm giving, I don't ever, I think I just very rarely assume that I'm doing something wrong, um, which is probably inappropriate. Um, if someone brings it up to me and says like, you hurt my feelings, I'll be like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I was just being goofy. Um, but um, in general, I will do and say inappropriate things. Um, certain kinds of inappropriate things that uh some people will be thrown off by and in general for some reason it seems like people like it usually um which is lucky me but um yeah a lot of the time like my wife should be like i can't believe you said that in front of those people and i don't understand why they liked it or <laughs> something like that but i think my wife is like turbo sleep energy and <laughs> play last maybe so it's shit. <laughs> she yeah she's not fond of the things that i do but you know she's picking up on it a little bit um but yeah overall i would if i had to describe it it really is like how much of a hypothetical idiot can i be in public to make people have fun like that is a good way to put it which is unfortunate but that's what it is all right so i, I love it man um you know like the non-apologetic play just do whatever you you want and i think the spontaneous part of it is what possibly what people love about it because it's like you didn't think it through, it's not planned. So there's nothing evil about it. You know, it's something usually when you plan it too much, it comes across as like nefarious. But like, if, right. you, if you just like say it and blurt it out, it's kind of like, oh yeah, this guy's just saying whatever he's thinking. Um, with that being said though, um, so you, Marco is also self above tribe. And yeah. he's, if you're using play, uh, because you're an IP, so you're, for you, you're always trying to put your best best self forward right trying to show your best self to everyone um oh. would you ever well, do something like manly's doing where he'll like act like an idiot and make himself look like an like an ass just just because it's fun would you ever do that i've done it um it's not common and usually when it happens it's not um intentionally uh but unintentionally all the time like <laughs> it just happens you know so i have heard too many stories of those like uh Happy misunderstandings uh, and just uh, rubbing people the wrong way without knowing it. Yeah, that happens all the time. Absolutely. And sometimes when I'm in extreme demon state, I just want to get a reaction and, and kind of provoke because I'm bored. So yeah, I get it. <laughs> now, since we're, uh, since we're on the topic of SF play, 
Um, part of SF play is also like feeling out the vibe of the room. So can you guys like at all times like feel like when like someone like destroys the energy or like something like destroy like kills like that that vibe, you know? You know, because like there's there's like the like even I don't have FE, right? I have FI, but I can still feel the vibe. And I know when someone comes in like this, like a Dementor from Harry Potter, like just stop the happiness from the room, you know, like just, just everything's destroyed. Um, how do you guys how do you guys uh, experience that and how do you deal with it when that like Dementor comes, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I'm very sensitive to, to those kind of situations um, where people take themselves too seriously um, or are having the, the wrong agenda, the wrong goal of, of um, the activity at hand. Like usually like some TE lead will usually just uh, really kill the vibe by being efficient and, and doing things as fast as possible or whatever. And, and maybe I'm out playing golf or something and, and the idea is just as a group to, to have fun and enjoy just while you take your shots super seriously and, and you're... And you, you kind of judge yourself when you do something bad or whatever. So yeah, I'm su super sensitive to it. Uh, I'm quite uh, aware of it as well. Uh, also, when I'm the one disrupting the vibe, because I certainly do that. So absolutely. Anyone else want to chime in? I yeah, feel like this something. One... Oh, sure. Go ahead, Manly. No, you add Rob. It's all good. I'll be the double. <laughs> so I'm gonna start. No, you can start. All right. Um, so I was gonna say this one's kind of a weird one because. We've been so isolated the past year. I'm having trouble thinking of examples, but <laughs> I'm thinking of like Discord calls where it's that I've been on with voice chats recently with it's just pure voice. It's really hard to get a feel for the vibe in general because like a lot of people aren't talking. It's not com uh, conversation going back and forth. But when certain when it's a smaller conversation and someone like enters, like the whole dynamic needs to kind of shift to incorporate that person. So you can really like feel that. Um, and you can even feel it in just like spaces between like people talking where it's like, oh, the, the mood is like shifted here. Like people are like processing more or it's like not as much of a play mode. So, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of like energy stuff. I don't know if that's like energy dom things as well, but yeah, that's the kind of stuff I would think of. All right, Manly. Um. Yeah, it's kind of similar to him. Um, I don't, I would say I'm constantly trying to pick up on what the energy is of anyone that I'm interacting with. Um, if they seem like they're not talking enough or they're not, um, they don't feel, they're not giving off like a positive energy in any given context. I kind of do feel responsible to try and give them the floor or try and encourage them to say something or I'll ask them a question or I'll just say like, hey, what do you think? And then kind of like in a nice tone to like just get them to speak up a little bit share their opinion, make them feel valued um, with the tribe, encourage them, say something nice to them, tell them they look nice today. Um, but in general, I am trying to constantly maintain an awareness of the SCFE energy for sure. Um, when people start bringing that down, um, I think it really does mess with like production and ultimately I'm trying to serve my SETI. So when it feels like the energy is going down, I think that's pretty dangerous to like a productive atmosphere, unless of course you're sitting alone and doing nothing. But even then it kind of feels like you have to have energy to be able to keep moving forward with what you're doing. Otherwise you're not gonna get anything done. Um, but yeah, sleep by people that are play last. Holy crap, man, they will come in the room and suck it out. And you gotta like, it's like blank stares. No offense to all of you people that might be watching. You suck the energy out of the room, but I love it. I was there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> love you, who's there. Who's there's not here right now. He's <laughs> in the UK. <laughs> um, okay. I feel okay saying that because I think that's what my wife is, but she knows it. I like tell her, like, Alex, when people are laughing, you don't state out, of, like, you don't state a math problem, like, in the middle of it, or, like, ignore what's happening. It, like, that doesn't, people aren't going to be, <laughs> it's just not going to work. <laughs> Don't press in on like the calculation that you made right when people are laughing at about a joke. Like that's the worst thing you can do. Um, but some people, they just don't understand. It's like the information is more important. I need to make sure to wait. You misunderstood. Stop laughing. I need to make sure you understand what I was communicating. And it's just like, holy crap. You couldn't wait three seconds for the laughter to stop. Like why? That's how it feels. It, I guess the energy is an important part of SF play and, and play in general. So 
even if it's not necessarily the vibe per se, it's still like an important part of like, oh, we need to move the energy up to get this conversation going or we should end this conversation. <laughs> Joyce, you want to chime in about your personal yeah, experience? What's, what's, the, what's the sleep side of this? Yeah, so I'm sleep first and I have a play demon. And so what happens is when when the mood of the room tends to go down, it's because nobody's talking. And I I, I dearly want to find like a topic people can bond over. But sometimes like I'm, I don't know how to get people talking sometimes. Cause <laughs> I'll try to like give them a topic and then it'll, it'll be kind of tough because <clears throat> it's... I, I, like I'm double feminine, so I don't like to always, always move people plus sleep first. So um, I take a more passive approach to it actually. So I want people to feel comfortable, but I often find people feel most comfortable when they're, when they're playing with me. So, and, and then I'm the one receiving it. So I'm very teasable. Like people like to tease me and kind of joke with me and I'm very receptive of it. And they find it really funny to look at my reactions. It's kind of, <laughs> that's my role. <laughs> It, yeah, I, people like to poke fun at me. And I, I like that they like that because then it makes everyone happy. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Double decider right there. Like, who, who yeah. cares? Kid people the love to poke fun at the double feminines, I think. <laughs> right. Because you just poke them and then they go. Like... <laughs> okay, so the last part of SF play that I want to cover is something that um, I heard some people with, you know, SF play talk about, which is trying to get because you know se is gathering right so gathering from the tribe what is cool you know like what is popular like for example you know maybe the latest like shoes came out like like let's say um um and then you're gonna go ask the tribe you know hey what's like the nicest shoe or like someone in your tribe tells you hey this this shoe is like what's cool right now it's like oh yeah fuck it i'm gonna get it get that shoe right now you know like one of the million millions of like manly type twins manly is like shit look type twins um they, so one of them told me that he does ping up people that they tell him what's cool, like the, the shoe that's cool. And he'll go buy the shoe after they tell him what's cool, you know? So like, do you guys do this? Do you like ping up the tribe to see like what's cool? And then do you like follow the trend, you know, of like what's cool? Whether that be like the, the latest clothes, shoes, gadgets, you know, like songs, whatever. Um, does anyone want to start with this? Well, I'll do it with songs. That that's that's free. Uh, <laughs> actually, that was actually one of my favorite parts of uh, about dating online. That people would like put uh, songs and artists in their dating profiles. Of people, like, oh, I can go check these out. These are pretty sweet. <laughs> um, but yeah, not not so much with other stuff. Like, and, and I I feel like I can sort of discern who has like a similar taste to me and things like that but like uh, shoes isn't like in my ni box or whatever i guess so i don't really think about that that much but yeah songs definitely what about you marco well what i usually do is i, I track what the tribe likes but in more in terms of um for my blaster function uh in, in terms of uh, what topics are popular uh, or what kind of problem people are facing or uh, and stuff like that so i like to like study uh, stand-up comedy especially de leads or, or savior de they usually like to find the consensus of the room of what's popular in this moment and that's kind of a way for me to learn about uh, the spectrum so I, I like to know the spectrum in anything basically uh, of what's popular in a sense um, so I can kind of place myself in the spectrum and kind of when I'm dealing with an audience, I can easily zoom in on the person I'm dealing with and kind of specialize uh, my blast according to, to that uh, kind of person. So Marco, I like how you are using the word person a lot. Um, so you're a single decider. So um, with, the, with the cool factor also involved like people, like this person is cool, this person is cool. I want to be more like this cool person. I want to take it some of the attributes of this cool person. You know, I want to be friends with this cool person. Like, is that kind of thoughts uh, come to your head since you know you have a whole not so much. Um, I usually just track whatever I kind of I punch the tribe all the time, so I see like what goes well and what doesn't go so well, and I keep what goes goes well and then kind of but still in an authentic way in a sense. Uh, so I'm still staying true to 
to my punchiness and, and I don't it change the style or anything, but I still track like where I cross the line and so forth. So yeah. Gotcha. What about you, Manly? Uh when it comes to uh things, I'm kind of conservative when it comes to spending money. So it's more like I'm aware of what's popular and what isn't but I don't really spend much time buying things and trying to fit in with what looks popular. Um, kind of similar to what Marco was saying. It kind of feels like I'm constantly tracking like ideas and what people, what people consume in terms of like hobbies um, and their beliefs. So that anytime people start sharing what they think, what they feel, what they do, um, I kind of, I, I have the ability to, kind of tap into certain aspects of what's most popular in that realm and uh, make myself seem like I am higher on the social spectrum in that specific class of, um, I guess, things that people like. I'm trying to, I'm in that genre of what is cool in society, like, I feel like I need to give an example. This is a freaking SD. Um, recently went to a party to hang out with some people. Um, I don't particularly have a lot of things in common with those people. For example, I don't consume a lot of anime or manga, okay? I'm just not that person. But I know a lot about it because I have several friends that have consumed a ton of it. So um, I didn't really fit in with that tribe because they're, they're a little bit more different, but I was able to heighten my social I'm saying different and nice, so I don't smile like that, Kendrick, and make it feel bad. They were cool people, okay? They liked anime and manga, but I just so happen to know different facts about anime, and I was able to tell them, share them some things, and suddenly I went from, like, maybe, like, a one on their social spectrum to, like, a eight or something like that to make myself more SF popular with them just because I knew some facts about what they were SF into, I guess. Um, so that's probably, I think that's most of what I do in that spectrum. All right, man, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> so Joyce, uh, what do you, uh, how do you gather SF from like different people? <laughs> yeah, I tend to gather SF from people if I think it'll serve as like a social lubricant, if it'll like help us get along better. Uh, and examples of this, because I want to get better with my ST, <laughs> is I'm drinking sparkling water right now and it's bubbly. And this is like what a lot of intermittent fasters tend to drink. Yeah. And I got it from my intermittent fasting friends because I wanted to, I wanted to get along with them better. But it's also because I, I'm like, well, if they're doing it, I, I want to see if it works as well. Um, there's also other things too, like I, I've gone into the Marvel comic universe because my friends really like the Marvel comics and so I want to watch it with them so we can have more friendship points and <laughs> so sometimes my preferences can feel like a collage of other people's preferences like I have this part of my personality because I spent a lot of time with this person and now I'm absorbing some of their traits and and now I, I have some of this cool stuff from this friend and so I, the things that I like they kind of sometimes originate from hearing it from other people or, or learning it, about it from other people. And it's funny because sometimes I, I judge that trait in other people. So I notice with other FE users I know, they, they sometimes take on the likes of other people. For, for instance, I, I had a friend who I told, um, I love the word muse because it's like being, a, being a, an inspiration for an artist. And then what, what my friend does, he's F.E., is he writes a poem to this girl that he likes and he uses the word that that is is a part of my, like the very little F I have, like the tiny little, <laughs> like he, he takes it and then he uses it for someone else. And so it like there are moments like that where I'm like, dang, F.E. just takes likes and preferences from other people. There's also, uh, I had a friend who I told, I, I like I have a dog that's a Shih Tzu and a Poodle. And so, I, it's funny because I always make a joke how it's like a shih tzu, it, it, like on his birth certificate, it says that he's a shit poo and it's very unfortunate for my dog to be called a shit poo. And then, you know, a few months later, my friend buys the exact same 
dog. <laughs> I'm like, that's very specific. There's no way you would have bought that without knowing like the, the joke that I tend to tell with that thing. And I'm like, man, people are just taking my preferences. And so that's like when, when it comes back to bite me and I'm like, this is, am I doing this? This is horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, I don't mean, I don't mean that to shame anyone. I just thought I'd share some experiences because I need to get better with the sensing. So, yeah. It's too late, Joyce. You already shame all the FE people from copying the, the, the feeling. <laughs> just, just okay. Because <laughs> you're so cool, Joyce. Stop being so cool. We'll stop taking your stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. All right, guys. So that's the, I think that's the perfect uh, wrap up for play.